guys, it's Sugar Rose Studios, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to re-sculpt your horse. So, the first thing that you're going to need is, obviously, your horse. It doesn't have to be primed at all. Um, I just prime all my horses that I'm going to be using as repaint. Um, however, this person wanted customization, so I primed this horse before they decided they wanted customization. So now I'm going to just start customizing. Okay, so what I use is a Dremel, and this is a rotary drill. So pretty much it, I put on a sander attachment and you want to do this like in an outside area just because the plastic kind of gets everywhere and you don't want to get it like in your house probably, unless you want plastic in your house. Um, so you have this Dremel and then you turn it on and then it will start drilling. So you just basically take the horse off the main and I will show you what I do. So pretty much all you have to do is take the area that you want the hair removed and just go up and back and forth with the sander and it's okay if you don't get it like super duper smooth because you can always smooth it down afterwards with some, some sandpaper as well as using some primer will also help smooth it down but you just want to get rid of whatever you don't want. Okay, so I'm absolutely covered in plastic right now and there's a bunch of little plastic bits everywhere, but pretty much his mane is now removed. And it's okay if it's not perfect, you can use just like sandpaper to get rid of like the imperfections there, but you want it to be a little bit more like, you want to shave off more than less. If you shave off less, then when you add on epoxy, it's going to be really awkward with like the transitions and everything. Um, but eventually, like, once you put on the epoxy, you'll need to sand again. But until you do that, like, you just want to go a little bit below because you can always add on, but, like, you can't take off once you've started, if that makes any sense. Also, since this was supposed to be a gelding, did that, and then also took off the, um, stomach label, and I'll fix that once I'm done, um, sanding him down and everything. So now I'm going to go back over him with a thinner grain of sandpaper, which means it has, I think, a higher number of the like the label i guess so it means that it's finer grain so you can make it smoother so now i'm just going over with the finer sandpaper and just smoothing it down and trying to make the transitions between where i have um, originally sanded just a little bit more smoother and cleaner okay so shaving off the mane and tail is like i would say probably the more basic customization um there's another way that you can customize so i'm not doing this actively on like any models but i've done it in the past so i'll just show you guys and like explain how you do it so um this is like um this just the body so i cut the pieces of this lepizaner stallion um so i basically like severed his uh neck off of his body and then like all the limbs and the tail are separate so when you go to customize um you have all the limbs and like so here's his tail and then i have all of his like leg pieces and so like basically all of the pieces are still there but like when you put them back together it's like piecing together a puzzle almost and but the thing is when you do this is you can re um reshape the limbs into any sort of like way that you want and when you're doing this i 100 percent like when you're cutting up the horse obviously that's the easiest part i would say but when you're re-sculpting you need a reference picture like it's, it's so useful so i don't think i have it right here or maybe i do so this is my dremel toolkit oh wow it opens from the other way okay um so this is my dremel toolkit so you'll want to use like some sort of cutter I think this is like a plastic cutter so you would want to use this blade and then just you attach it to the dremel and like saw off but i'm not going to be doing that today because i don't have any models that i'm doing that on but i can show you how you end up re-sculpting them okay so i'm using this like bird drill and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take like the different parts of the horse and just drill in some holes Now you have your model and the hair is all removed and everything 
and you're going to want to use this modeling compound it's called epoxy there is a part a and part b and you can get this stuff on amazon and a lot of other websites so pretty much this stuff will harden after um around 24 hours it usually hardens a little faster than that though i find and um it will become super per permanent and super hard so what we'll do is just open the first time i used this i didn't really read the directions but um, you want to mix an equal part of A and B, and then that will like cause the reaction to happen where it will harden and everything. But you'll still want to, they won't dry out on their own. Well, they kind of will, but so just make sure to keep the caps on. I find that the part B kind of dries out a lot more than the part A does. So you want to take equal amounts, and it doesn't have to be equal by weight. It doesn't have to be like super perfect. Just kind of try and eyeball it. Um, and don't use more i'm already using way too much don't use more than you need because you can always mix more but once you mix what you have you like can't really like put it back or else it will just harden so you just take the two parts and you mix them together pretty thoroughly and then after you do that you just are going to want to wait around like five minutes sometimes i usually just wait like a, a minute or two because it will be a little sticky because the chemicals are still like reacting reacting with each other and it's making like the modeling compound like workable and everything so just wait like a few minutes um and this stuff is really great it's waterproof it doesn't shrink at all and um it comes in different colors i like to use natural colors uh but some people will use like red or um I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. I think it comes in blue, but there's a bunch of different colors that you can use. But I just got the gray one just because it's pretty natural. Okay, so now you have your epoxy. Make sure to put the lids back on so they don't dry out. And the tools that I'll be using are, um, they're called silicone sculpting tools. So the ones that I would say I use the most are probably like this one I use a lot for hair. Um, and I think I have a bigger version of it somewhere, but I also use this one. Oh yeah, here it is. So these are kind of like cone shaped and they're silicone sculpting tools. And another thing that you will want on hand is um, a little bit of water and a paintbrush. Uh, this is because when you're done sculpting, you just want to lightly run a brush over what you just sculpted so that will get rid of any like goopy pieces. Okay, so once you've mixed your epoxy and waited a little bit, you can just take a little bit of it and I like to just like roll it out into like a little flat slug snake kind of a thing. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything because you're gonna put it on the horse and sculpt. Uh, so basically we will put it on to the head here. Um, and you just want to make sure you're putting it like you can do pretty much there's so many different styles of hair that you can do I would recommend looking at a reference picture. I kind of have an idea in mind I've looked at quite a few pictures for this one, so I don't have one, but um, so we'll just put the hair on like so And then you just want to like flatten it down just because you don't want the you don't want it to like be too bulgy and come up because then it will look weird because i mean when you look at other like models the hair is kind of like almost seamlessly onto the model uh something super important to do when you're working with epoxy is use a lot of water but not too much water and you can kind of tell when it gets waterlogged um it will be like it will kind of become a weirder weird texture and it like won't stick so you want to make sure to balance the amount of water that you're using but definitely use water because it is super duper helpful so, yeah, and just want to add it on and smooth it out with your fingers. And this also goes the same for um, when you're doing like necks and, and redoing like the neck area and everything, you want to smooth it out really well. And you'll probably have to sand over it again just because you it just bumps a little bit. <laughs> some 
extra epoxy left over, so I'm gonna do another mane as well. Okay, so we're gonna add some hair to her as well. So this is how um, they both turned out. I'm really happy with the braid on the Hanoverian mare on the left. I recently did a braid like that a few months ago and I think that I have improved since then. So before I will repaint them, I will usually do another layer of primer and that kind of helps um, make the surface a little bit smoother just in case you had any kind of cracks or imperfections or maybe the neck wasn't super perfect and flawless. Sometimes when you use the primer it will build up um, the transitions a little bit more so they're smoother and cleaner so you won't end up having to do as much sanding. So sometimes what I'll do is um, sand after, uh, after drilling and then um, add the epoxy in the main and then I will use the primer and then sand again. This is more like a mane and tail kind of a custom. I think I'm gonna do a video in the future of like a more extreme custom of like whole body rearrangement, but um, this is basically a simple customization for now just because I'm not I'm not super good at like full body customization at the moment. So I'm still trying to like figure out um, what works for me and then I'll make a video on that. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. And um, don't forget to also like this video, comment something cool, and follow me on Instagram where I post every single day. Also check out my Etsy store where I am selling um, customs as well as tack and occasionally I'll sell some other stuff on there, so go check that out. And um, I'm still currently taking commissions. So, and I'm starting school on September 8th which is pretty exciting, but also not exciting because it's gonna be virtual. Uh, yeah, so bye roses. Don't forget to stay sweet. Mwah.